Hi, I'm Raj, and today I'd like to show you our upcoming LT-enabled compute platform, the S2 module, along with our cloud platform solution that we call Superstack. Superstack is more than just a fleet management platform. It includes a remote code editor that lets you edit the code of your devices in the field in real time. It includes data aggregation from all of your devices and an AI agent that lets you query your data and analyze it in real time. The S2 includes a range of I.O. for connecting sensors and other peripherals. We support sensors like these that are commonly found from Adafruit, SparkFun, DigiKey and the like. The sensors are designed to be plug and play. So you can simply plug them in, daisy chain them and then program this board remotely to read the data and send it back to the cloud. The S2 can also be powered in a number of different ways. You can power it through USB-C, external power, or a lithium polymer cell like this one. Again, it's plug and play, and the board features a built-in battery charger and voltage regulators for you to save power and turn off sensors when you're not using them. Now I'll show you how easy it is to connect your S2 module to Superstack and program it. First, we begin by powering up the board. Here I'm using USB-C, but you could use a battery also. You'll notice that the LED starts blinking. This means it's searching for networks. As soon as it goes solid, that means it's connected. There we go. Now here in Superstack, I've made a brand new deployment. I click Add Device. I enter the IMEI of the device. I can optionally give it a name. And then I click Add Device. Then on the board, I click the button to confirm. And there we are, it's now connected. Before we start programming the board, let's add a sensor. Here I've got the MCP9808 temperature sensor for microchip. I'll plug it into the board and we'll send I squared C commands to read the temperature values and send it back to Superstack. Here is where you can edit the code of your S2 module. If you have multiple boards, you can select it from this menu on the left hand side. Along the right, there's some controls for stopping, starting and saving your code. You can also push the same code to multiple boards. Let's start with the Hello World example. I'll delete these comments here and type print Hello World. This is Lua code. Lua is quite a simple programming language and it runs natively on the S2 module itself. So whatever you program here will be downloaded to the board over LTE and it will run on the board. Let's save this. And in the log view at the bottom, you'll see hello world is printed. There's no loop here, so the code starts, it prints hello world, and then it stops again. Let's now talk to the temperature sensor that we added earlier on. We'll start by trying to read the device ID. The S2 module supports a range of I.O. including I squared C, SPI, and UART. Here we'll use I squared C to talk to the device. We'll start by reading the device ID register here. This is a register 06 in hex. And we want to read two bytes. By default, the I squared C port will be port A, but you can override it to any pin like so. If the response was a success, we can print out the device ID. We'll also need to convert the two bytes we read out into a 16 bit integer, as stated in the datasheet. Let's try this out. The chip ID is 54 in hex. If we look at the datasheet, we'll see that this is indeed the correct value. I've adjusted the code to also add an error condition if the chip isn't found. We can try this out here. 
Here I've changed the base address of the MCP9808. And here you can see that we hit the error, device not found. Next, we can loop and read the temperature values. I've already prepared this code to save a bit of time. Let's paste it in and I'll read you through what it does. So this loop will run forever. It will read the 05 register. And then according to the data sheet, there's a certain bit we need to check to know if the temperature value is above or below zero degrees. This data sheet provides some sample code over here. I've essentially just simplified this and copied it over. We don't need to worry about this below zero condition for now. Let's just look at this one. This is the calculation that's used if the temperature is above zero degrees Celsius. Again, this calculation can be just taken from the data sheet. The final temperature is then a float value and it's printed here. We then sleep for one second and then the loop continues again and again. Let's try this out. And here we can see the temperature being updated every second. If I hold the board to warm it up a little, you can see that the temperature indeed starts to change. Now, rather than just printing the temperature, let's send it back as data to the data tab. This can then be used by the AI agent later on. We can replace this line with data. Here you can enter key pairs and these become JSON. Let's save this. And now you see nothing is printed but if we go to the data tab, you'll see that this is returning temperature back every one second, just as it did before. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. If you go to Superstack today, you'll notice this greenhouse demo. There are also some other demos which you can check out. Here there are multiple devices, each representing different plants and vegetables. If you click on one of them, you'll notice three things about them. One is the device name, the second is a group, and the third is a device role. Each of these devices have different names and roles. There is also a role for the AI agent. All of this put together is how the AI agent determines answers when you ask it a question. For example, if I ask it, what is the temperature in my greenhouse right now? Because I included the keyword greenhouse, the AI agent will only consider the devices in the group greenhouse. This is the power of natural language when it comes to analyzing complex data. Superstack and our S2 modules make building hardware AI agents incredibly simple and will save you months building your own IoT infrastructure. We'll also be including APIs and webhooks such that you can connect to devices directly from your own business systems. You'll be able to run natural language queries and export data as you wish. It's completely up to you. So there we are. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and share with your friends and colleagues. We hope to have more information on the S2 module and Superstack coming very soon. We plan for the boards to be available at distribution in summer of 2025. So keep an eye on our website, our docs pages and more videos coming very soon. See you in the next one.